gas, bloating, stomach pain. If you have even just one of these symptoms, you could still have EPI because not everybody experiences EPI the same way, which is why it's so important to open up to your doctor about all your symptoms. And the good news is EPI is manageable, so don't keep a lid on it. Go to identifyepi.com, complete the symptom checker, and use it to have a conversation with your doctor. Don't keep a lid on it. Visit identifyepi.com. Brought to you by AbbVie. Give him a good hearing. Oh. NBC News Radio. I'm Lisa Carter. Appearing with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, President Trump says the U.S. and Israel have much in common, including the love of freedom. Our shared belief in human dignity and our shared hope for an Israel at lasting peace. We want Israel to have peace. Trump acknowledged in Jerusalem that a peace agreement may be one of the toughest deals of all. The president says the volatile Middle East has experienced too much violence and suffering for too long. We're not likely to hear from former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn anytime soon. He'll reportedly refuse to testify in an upcoming Senate hearing about Russian meddling in the presidential election. Flynn is rejecting a Senate subpoena and will take the fifth, invoking his constitutional right against self-incrimination. There's a new man behind the wheel at Ford Motor Company. The new CEO of Ford, Jim Hackett, says an improved company is always the goal. It never can relax because the world's always moving. My old football coach used to say you either get better or worse, you don't stay the same. Hackett is replacing retiring CEO Mark Fields. Ford's executive chairman, Bill Ford Jr., said the company's board of directors decided to make the change last Friday. Hackett has headed Ford's self-driving vehicle division. He says Ford will continue to build cars around the world, including in Mexico. That's Sharon Reed reporting on the story. Just hours after winning the poll for Sunday's Indianapolis 500, Scott Dixon and former driver Dario Franchitti had guns pointed at them. Multiple outlets report Dixon, his wife, and Franchitti were robbed at a Taco Bell drive through by two teenagers who were later arrested. Chip Ganassi Racing issued a statement saying both drivers are completely fine. More than 200,000 pounds of Nathan's and Curtis brand beef hot dogs are being recalled because they may contain shards of metal. They were produced on January 26th. No reports of injuries. You're listening to the latest from NBC News Radio. Hello, I'm Pastor Greg Young, inviting you to join me each Tuesday and Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. right here on KCAA for Chosen Generation Radio, the show where no topic is off limits and everything is filtered through biblical glasses, dynamic interviews, and no fake news. It all happens live at 10.50 a.m., 102.3 FM, 106.5 FM, and online at kcaaradio.com. 1 p.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm Pastor Greg. Please tune in. KCAA, the stations that leave no listeners behind. This is Joe Lyons. Guardian Jet Center at Ontario International Airport would like to now honor the memory of those who have made the greatest sacrifice for our country. On Memorial Day 2017, we salute Army Sergeant John R. Cruz, who served his country above and beyond the call of duty. A squad of infantry was advancing toward a German village in April 1945. An enemy machine gun and an automatic rifle opened fire on Cruz's platoon and the men were pinned down, in deadly danger from the fire on the hillside. Cruz rushed the strong point alone and crawled up the hill in the direct line of fire. Cruz managed to wipe out the crew of the machine gun nest and even though badly wounded he charged the rifle position and so unnerved the remaining enemy soldiers that seven surrendered to him on the spot while his entire company moved forward into the village. John R. Cruz was awarded the Medal of Honor for service above and beyond. Today, Guardian Jet Center salutes the men and women whose sacrifice has made the American way of life possible. Guardian, the most advanced fixed base operator at the Ontario International Airport, redefines the expectations of the general aviation business traveler, one client at a time. Single engine or cabin class aircraft give Guardian the opportunity to enhance the customer experience. The Guardian Jet Center is the gateway to Southern California. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way. Getting America back on track. Bill Martinez live.
Israel has built one of the world's great civilizations, a strong, resilient, determined, and prosperous nation. It is also a nation forged in the commitment that we will never allow the horrors and atrocities of the last century to be repeated. Now we must work together to build a future where the nations of the region are at peace and all of our children can grow and grow up strong and grow up free from terrorism and violence. During my travels in recent days, I have found new reasons for hope. I have just concluded a visit to Saudi Arabia, where yesterday I met with King Solomon and with the leaders from across the Muslim and Arab world. In that visit, we reached historic agreements to pursue greater and greater cooperation in the fight against terrorism and its evil ideology. My future travels will take me to visit Pope Francis at the Vatican and then our NATO and European allies. We have before us a rare opportunity to bring security and stability and peace to this region and to its people, defeating terrorism and creating a future of harmony, prosperity and peace. But we can only get there working together. There is no other way. Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, I look forward to working closely with both of you during my stay. We love Israel. We respect Israel. And I send your people the warmest greetings from your friend and ally, all of the people in the United States of America. We are with you. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. And Donald Trump uh, reaffirming uh, our relationship uh, with Israel uh, upon his visit uh, there. And, uh, of course, you know there has to be uh, some controversy regardless. And, uh, you know, we mentioned that uh, uh, previously that, you know, during the campaign that uh, then-candidate uh, Trump had uh, said that um, he saw a time when, uh, you know, the capital uh, that the United States would acknowledge Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And, of course, uh, with that comes all kinds of controversy, especially in light of what the P Palestinians are trying to negotiate. And, uh, you know, and the thing is, there is such contention about everything that's Israel and, and, and what is Palestine, uh, Palestine and, you know, and we can get into that. In fact, a little bit later on, we're going to be uh, talking with, um, you know, Dr. William Grady, who uh, has done just a, an incredible amount of research. We'll take us back in the history of Israel and the holy ground that, is, that it is in his new book titled Holy Ground. And uh, so he'll be on a little bit later, and maybe you'll have a little bit more understanding about uh, the importance of of uh, the history of Jerusalem and why this conflict continues between uh, Palestine and Israel. But along the way, of course, as you say, uh, you know, the media is going to do everything they can to trip up this president. This trip is going so well. And for the most part, I got to say, the media has done a fairly good job in reporting the facts on this. And uh, I think it's just so obvious. I think, you know, the president and the team is doing just so well and doing such a solid job. They're, they're hard-pressed to come up with controversy. But, of course, here it is. Uh, let's, you know, stick a little stick in somebody's eye here regarding the Western Wall. And uh, I was glad to hear uh, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, clear up the matter. And this is what she said, and I quote, I believe the Western Wall is part of Israel. I think that is how we always have seen it and how we should pursue this. Uh, Haley made his comments on uh, CBN uh, that uh, we've always thought the Western Wall was part of Israel. Uh, it has uh, been, uh, like I said, a very positive, uh, positive trip so far. And, um, you know, uh, obviously Israel is embracing uh, Donald Trump. But again, I look at the, the contrast 
Um, it is amazing to me, and I, I don't know if, if you're seeing it the way I am uh, in terms of how uh, this president is being embraced and received, uh, in this case, uh, Saudi Arabia, and now in Israel versus the, the previous administration. And I know maybe some of you might go, well, of course, you know, look, look at, uh, you know, w what the Donald Trump administration means to both these parties, to the Arab world. I mean, for the president to talk to 50 Arab nations, uh, to be able to talk to them, wow, I, and the way in which he did and what, uh, and what he was able to communicate to them. Certainly, uh, it was in their interest, they see it in their interest, that uh, you know, they've got to combat ISIS as well, that they have to take a stand. And there's been individual standings and instances, but not a concerted effort. And I believe this is going to go a long way in joining the Arab nations to come against ISIS in a big way. And uh, perhaps one of the biggest, and I mean, this is huge, one of the biggest promises that President Trump, then candidate Trump, made, if you remember, was to eradicate ISIS. And uh, this will go a long way to that end. And, uh, and, and then, you know, there's also that controversy John McCain brought up about uh, human rights violations and, you know, what kind of stand, you know, was the president taking on human rights? Well, you know, if you're friends with somebody and you have a relationship with them, then you can begin to address these longstanding culture, uh, uh, cultural issues and the treatment of people. But, you know, coming right out the bat, I think, you know, this is all part of diplomacy. You know, it's, uh, it's obvious, and, you know, the Arabs know that uh, the way they treat women is a problem for the, those of us on the West, in the West. And uh, they understand it, and we don't necessarily, you know, and I, I like how Donald Trump said, hey, we're not here to, you know, to preach to you or to lecture you and tell you how you should live. Uh, that was his kind of way of addressing that. But it's a little bit easier, I believe, to, you know, have that conversation with somebody uh, when you're friends with them and you have a relationship. You know, John McCain cited uh, Ronald Reagan. Well, Ronald Reagan just didn't come out of nowhere to make the statements to tell Gorbachev to tear the wall down. There had been some relationship. There had been some things set into motion to where, um, you, you know, it was in, in a sense, it was a game of chess. And Gorbachev was checkmated. And... And Ronald Reagan was at that point where he could call the question and say, look, it, let's, you know, let's tear this wall down. Uh, but it didn't come out of nowhere. It took some time. So I think that uh, here we have, you know, President Donald Trump, <laughs> not even 120 days. And, and people are expecting to wave a wand and, oh, yeah, by the way, we've got all this controversy and all this anchor dragging that he has behind him. Uh, thank you very much, the mainstream media and the establishment that's so upset because of what Donald Trump is shaking up. But uh, there's a whole lot of shaking been going on, and something tells me it's just beginning. This is Bill Martinez. We're live at 15 minutes after. In these uncertain times, it makes sense to have a sustainable backup method to cook food and boil water. If your current plan includes using a fuel-burning stove or cooking over an open fire, then there's a much better way. The Miniman Rocket Stove is a biomass-burning cooking stove that only requires small quantities of sticks and twigs for fuel. The Miniman Stove is easy to use, smokeless, portable, powerful, and sustainable. For the finest in survival cooking stoves and fire starters made right here in the USA, go to MinutemanStove.com. That's MinutemanStove.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy.
Lifetime Grazed 100% grass-fed beef has the health benefits you seek. When compared to conventional beef, it offers good fats while virtually eliminating the bad. That's the result of cattle who never eat grain, ever. Rich in antioxidants, including vitamin E, C, beta-carotene, and CLA. No artificial hormones, antibiotics, or other drugs. For all our fresh, non-cooked products with only 100% grass-fed beef, go to MidasResources.com. Use voucher code GCN to get 30% off your order. MidasResources.com or find us on Facebook. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you happy washing your hands with harsh chemicals? Are you happy doing laundry with detergents? Are you happy paying high prices? Find your happiness with Pure Soap. These all-natural, earth-friendly Pure Soaps are the very best you've ever used. Buy in bulk. Get a 12, 36, or 48-month supply. Or get items individually and still save big. You're getting soap products twice as good as what you're using now. Earth-friendly and natural soaps. Your family deserves the best. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. Why not put your money up the drain for a change? See them at 5starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Cal Bend Soap Company can save you thousands of dollars and give you good old-fashioned real soaps that are triple concentrated. Soaps made from vegetable and coconut oils. See their full selection of soaps at 5starsoap.com. That's F-I-V-E starsoap.com. Or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. Letting you know about it before the defecation hits the oscillation. Bill Martinez, live. There was once a time, a time that to be a Republican in this area of the country felt a little bit by a bit like being Gary Cooper in high noon, out, <laughs> outnumbered in a big way. But I remember the story of a fellow who was running for office as a Republican, and he was in a rural area and that wasn't known to be Republican and he stopped by a farm to do some campaigning and when the farmer heard he was a Republican his jaw dropped and he said wait right here till I go get Ma she's never seen a Republican before <laughs> so he got her and the candidate looked around for a podium from which to give his speech and the only thing he could find was a pile of that stuff that Bess Truman took 35 years trying to get Harry to call fertilizer. <laughs> so he got up on the mound, and when they came back, he gave his speech. And at the end of it, the farmer said, that's the first time I ever heard a Republican speech. And the candidate said, that's the first time I've ever given a Republican speech from a Democratic platform. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank God for Ronald Reagan. I mean, if nothing else, just just to remember, you know, uh, he he was uh, no doubt a, a man for the time, and gifted, uh, you know, and he will always be, it seems, the uh, the standard bearer of the Republican Party and the comparative, don't you think, Scott? I mean, well, yeah, this... I I think what that that clip really shows is that we've been through this before. We've done this before, where where being a Republican was somehow is somehow a bad word, uh, synonymous, with, you know, at times with with racism and all this, and um, it just shows that uh, there was a point in time where we were fighting the same uphill battle, mm -hmm. and, well, and we got to remember that we do we are the majority party at the moment. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is that 
Reagan found through experience. I mean, he was a Democrat himself before he became a Republican and understood um, in, in terms of his agenda in his own life and preferences, as you've heard me say before, um, you know, life uh, defines, and life and experience defines preference. And for Ronald Reagan, uh, conservatism came out loud and clear. It wasn't something he always embraced. Uh, but when uh, he saw the party is starting to go in their, their, you know, different directions, it became obvious that the Republican Party was a better home for him and a better fit, uh, you know, uh, issues of life and um, responsibility, self-responsibility were found more in the Republican Party than in the Democratic Party. The Democrats say, look at, uh, you, you know, they have a lot of compassion, and as we've been talking about, the difference between uh, compassion and justice, well, you know, once you be, begin to go down that road of compassion, you always do it at somebody's expense. Now, um, I guess compassion might be considered the original populist message, but it's very dangerous when you think you're going to take from someone and give to the other. And that's, you know, whether it was the Obama administration or anything that came out of uh, socialist Democrats, it's that idea, but it's all a ruse because there's never enough money to be compassionate to everybody. It's always going to be at somebody ex somebody's expense. And so let's uh, take the hard work and the earnings of someone who has, uh, you know, gotten up every morning and, and done the right thing and earned money for their family. And let's take it away from them and give it to somebody who is less fortunate, less fortunate uh, by circumstances, probably in too many cases, uh, less fortunate by their own doing. And I, I know that some people might sit there and say, well, wait a minute, you know, I was, I was born this, I was born into this. Well, we hear the stories time and again, you know, like Dr. Ben Carson, who was born into a situation that there was no way that he was supposed to have been successful. Nick Sanchez, I mean, he was part of the Pedro Pan, the Peter Pan uh, 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 dynamic uh, out of Cuba. I mean, he's, what, 13 years old? He tells me he's got 10 cents in his pocket, he and his brother. And uh, here they come. They they came to America without. It was a refugee. You talk about a refugee program. Three what some three thousand kids were sent here. No parents, no family. They were just sent here like orphans. And uh, here Nick and his brother had to pick themselves up. Went on, became educated. Uh, he is uh, of course uh, a professor emeritus out of uh, out of Massachusetts. Uh, just an incredible man. Incredible success story. And this is America. These are the opportunities that are still there, but the government wants to get in the way. And for quite a while, because of all the regulations, and in a sense, it was kind of a soft peddling of socialism, you know, that uh, people were going to be brought into some sort of comradeship and some sort of constituency to have their efforts, uh, you know, put into the general good pile and as if taxes and everything else was not enough, but it was a slow choking process. And look what's happened here briefly, just in the brief time that President Trump has been in office and lifting these regulations that, you know, took off these choke lines and these handcuffs on uh, American entrepreneurs and would-be entrepreneurs who are coming in from other countries. It's just been fantastic. You know, uh, what, what do you say, Scott? Well, I, this is actually one thing that I think when people, they hear trickle down and they start, um, they, they start talking about the, you know, your big companies. First off, your, your big companies is a house that's already built. Uh, those gutters are already set. Where, where things trickle down for them, it's already a, a set path. It's already in place. Uh, what you need to do, though, is get guys like a Bill Martinez or, or a Scott um, to, to take that chance to start our own business because then we're, we're, we're I always you know equate it to building a house we're building a house and then we get to start trickling down we get to decide where the money goes and we open up new avenues and things like that and that seems to be w what what's happening right now there seems to be more uh, we, we've talked to numerous people that said you know small businesses are certain that starting to happen again right. and, uh, and and I think that's the key I, I think that's the key for everything. I think creating a, a larger middle class is exactly what we need. Mm. And what people have to be careful of is kind of what uh, Stephen Clifford, if you m remember in his book CEO Pay Machine, what he wrote about is not to get skeptical because you're seeing how CEOs are capturing so much money. The marketplace has to resolve this issue. I mean, 
it is no, no question whatsoever. And I have a big issue with that, with CEOs being paid. Uh, it used to be 10 times now, 35, 40 times more than, uh, you know, the labor force out there. And that's something uh, that the labor force itself, the culture needs to, uh, needs to vacate. And also, um, I think stockholders. Stockholders need to be conscious of it. I, I mean, I, I, I am hard-pressed. I, I got to tell you, I'm hard-pressed for these CEOs to be uh, paid this kind of money. Nobody, I don't know of anybody being worth 35 times, especially when companies uh, don't dramatically improve by 35 times. I, you know, they seem to get that money um, because that's what's negotiated and because of this, this new process that uh, has come about in terms of CEO pay. Uh, you know, you talk about headhunters for, you know, the everyday person. Well, CEOs, it's a whole other ballgame altogether. And they've been able to... Uh, you know, kind of set the standard for the payment, and it has gotten way out of whack. So Stephen Clifford's uh, book on that issue, I understand, and, and I understand why the everyman, uh, the forgotten man, Main Street America, can look at this and go, whoa, what is wrong with this? And then with the reality of the numbers, I mean, they knew CEOs were getting paid better, flying around in these jets and, you know, the clothes they wear. They know they're getting paid, but they, I, I'm sure that many people did not realize that they're being paid at the rate that they are today. I mean, it's, uh, but you look at that and you can get, you can get absolutely cynical and think that's the way it is. And so why should I work? Why should I compete? Well, you compete because uh, that is, uh, that is the right thing to do. And that's what makes you happy. You know, uh, for people who are non-productive, people who are not doing what it is that their talents and giftings have called them to do are very frustrated and very unhappy people. Uh, whether they're in the workforce or just waiting to get a job, but you can't wait to get a job. You know, like my old pastor friend, Ken Spark, uh, says that, uh, you, you know, you have 40 hours a week to give, 40 hours a week. You either have a job or you have 40 hours looking for a job. I like that. That makes a lot of sense to me, and that's my encouragement to you. Thank you so much for being with us. The conversation continues here with Bill Martinez Live. Bruce Thatcher, yes, uh, history speaks. Uh, my favorite uh, immigration consultant who wrote a great book on immigration has a new book to talk about. He's coming up next right here. It's 29 minutes after the top of the hour. From CBN Documentaries comes a new film, In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem, the extraordinary true story of the Six-Day War. Our goal is clear, to wipe Israel off the map. For six days in 1967, surrounded by enemies on all sides, Israel stood alone. The time has come. And changed history. To begin a battle of annihilation. In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem. In select movie theaters for a special one-night event, Tuesday, May 23rd. For theaters and tickets, go to inourhands1967.com. With a recession ending, if you've been putting off building your business, now is the time to act. General Steel will meet or beat any price on a pre-engineered steel building of the same size and specifications. Act now before steel prices go up. So call us today for free information. Call 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. The new word on the street is bloated. KCAA Loma Linda, 1050 AM, K292 FQ Riverside, and K293 CF Moreno Valley. Live, brought to you every day at this same time, Monday through Friday. Your host is Dr. Bob Marshall, PhD, a clinical nutritionist for over 35 years. He successfully helped more than 50,000 people. That's why he's known for nutrition that really works. And he's here today to share nutritional secrets which have taken years to discover and which he's implemented on his own health journey. The supplements that Dr. Marshall recommends are almost all live source, free of questionable encapsulating agents, and have been created using the highest manufacturing standards available for dietary supplements. Dr. Marshall's comments have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. On each and every show, Dr. Marshall listens to your health and nutrition questions and provides education for your continued good health. And now, here's Dr. Marshall. Welcome to Healthline Live. We're here to answer your nutrition and health-related questions. You can reach us toll-free, 888-588-7576, and you can visit us online 
at qnlabs.com. Out there you'll find prior broadcasts, all our radio listening times around the country, and much, much more. We invite you and your friends to join us for Saturday for our one-hour blockbuster show. And there uh, we can cover a lot more ground, and uh, we're with you for a whole hour. Uh, the website, qnlabs.com, qnlabs.com. And don't forget, every day that we come to you, we've got a Blockbuster special to reward you and your family for tuning in. Today, we're going to have our Lean Keto Blend on special, and this is one of the most wonderful thermogenic formulas. It features the green coffee bean and much, much more, so it can really help you kick off getting that uh, fat burning going on the body. And, you know, couple that with the biofield diet and a very brief morning fast to help you to get the body into fat burning and used to fat burning. Wow. And the idea is get you to that ideal weight. When you get to that ideal weight, you want to stay there the rest of your life. Even one pound of excess body fat, one pound can mean chronic inflammation, which can mean, uh, over the years, an invitation to cancer and much worse. So you really want to get that ideal weight. It's a big, big deal. So jump on Lean Keto Blend. This is a formula that takes advantage of many of the research findings of the last 10, 15 years. And uh, you'll be able to buy two, get 25% off each. And you may want to couple this with our quantum adaptogen because this has also played a key role by helping to promote a balance of all the hormones in the body. If they're too high or too low, this guy gets in there. That's what an adaptogenic herb does, and it promotes a healthy balance for these. And pretty much no matter what your body size, you just take three capsules. Adaptogen comes 90 caps to a bottle, so of course you've got a whole month's supply there. And we also have our Slim Body Way on special. And so if you're interested in making a, a, a powerful breakfast or even an afternoon snack to keep you from slumping, then I would suggest that all of you jump on today's great special, our Slim Body Way. This is a delicious, protein-rich smoothie blend, and it's just really great for lean body weight, and for getting the uh, anti-aging support that this product provides because it has over 5,000 ORAC units. And the USDA said that the goal was 5,000 in a day to have enough antioxidant to deal with the things of our environment, and this product alone will take care of that with over 5,000 ORAC units, great taste, you can flavor it in the afternoon when you're at maximum insulin sensitivity. You're going to be able to jump on this and uh, maybe put a couple bananas in it or some blueberries or whatever it is that you really like and make yourself a real stick-to-your-guts protein-rich drink. You can also use this right after a hard workout, whether it's morning or afternoon. And today, you'll buy two and get 25% off each. This is a real steal. So jump on this. This is a great tasting, great product. I frequently use Slim Body Way. You're going to just love what it does. Give a buzz to that order line, which is 800-370-3447. 800-370-3447. All right, this is Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D. This is Healthline Live. We're answering your nutrition and health-related questions. We're going to go right to the phones, and let's go to Marley in Monrovia, California. And her feet and legs get swelling and hot and red every day. Boy, that's miserable. Are you there, Marley? Yes, and uh, thanks for taking this call. Um, It also sometimes happens during the night when Uh I'm sleeping. You bet. And it's painful. Okay. And tell me, how old a woman are you and how much do you weigh? 75, around 130, 25, 30. Well, what the body is telling you is the kidneys are unhappy. 
and you're probably still eating your big meal at night. You can't do that anymore. The meal at night's going to have to be a lighter meal, like a salad with no oil, just some uh, good vinegar, uh, raw vinegar, and a uh, very light food, maybe some bread with no oil. And if you get a copy of the um, Biofield Diet, there's a resource list, and on it there'll be quite a few breads that you can find that have no oil. But almost everything else you eat contains these refined oils, which are a nail in your coffin, very hard on the kidneys, and it can, can actually induce kidney failure. So there's a lot of super bad things that can happen. But if you're going to eat meat, fish, poultry, eggs, or dairy products, you should reduce it to about once or twice a week, and it should be at lunchtime, not at dinner. And then you should jump on something like kidney support, and at your body weight and size, about three per meal. And the next thing you're going to need is a small amount of DHA. This is an oil that comes from microalgae, uh, docosahexanoic acid. And you'll take about five of those at the main meal, okay? And now you've got very good kidney support. But it's also possible, Marley, that you've had children or you've had a severe injury to your low back. Have you had children? Five. My God, fantastic. I had two. I thought that was a workout. <laughs> Great job. So in any of those, did you have uh, an episiotomy where you tore rectally to vaginally and they had to sew you up? All of them. All of them. Okay, so I can guarantee you that that scar is reflexing to the kidneys, and it's probably had 50 years to do it, so it's wanting to destroy both kidneys. So what you need to do desperately is to get to someone who can mud pack that. They can test you and figure out exactly what needs to be done by mud packing this you will only need to use the DHA and the kidney support probably for four to six months. And at that time, the lazy kidneys, the laziest organ in town, will have received what it needs to promote its best structure and function, and you will not need to continue taking anything, there won't be any swelling, and you won't need to do any more mud packing. How's that sound for a deal? It sounds great. I'll take it. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye. All right. This is Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D. This is Healthline Live, and we're answering your nutrition and health-related questions. You reach us toll-free, 888-588-7576. Let's go right back to the phones. Let's go to Elizabeth in Littleton, Colorado, and she wonders if at her age eye support can still help her eyes. Are you there, Elizabeth? Yes, I am, doctor. And how old a woman are you? I am, I am 80, about mm -hmm. 100 pounds. Okay, well, I would say absolutely it still could. Okay. And what you would do if there's a vision issue is you'd take maybe six to, you're very small, so I would take six capsules at breakfast, and I would do that for about six to eight weeks until okay. you see no further change. Okay. Then I would cut to about three per week, okay? Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, how many weeks did you say? That's well, right. six or eight weeks, six you'll be able to tell. I mean, if things are gradually, yeah. you know, changing, you want to do it until you see no further change. Okay? Great. Uh, may I have one more question? Yes, go right uh, ahead. The vitamin D3, I, am, I was just reading about it, that uh, deficiency causes muscle weakness. Is that correct? I'm not familiar with that as a particular effect of D3. D3 um, has been shown by Dr. Canal at UCLA to be involved with literally every key immune compound that body produces, so it's a big player there. It's very critical in bone metabolism, uh, and those are the two things for which it's really famous, okay? Yeah, that's what I understood because yeah. I heard you before, yeah. Yeah, that's what it's, uh, the literature shows it's very famous for. And for me, is uh, D3 uh, three drops enough, or should I uh, Well, uh, you're a very small woman, but I still would probably use six drops. Six drops, and, oh. And at your age, I would probably put it in an ounce of water, 
and add two or three drops of limonene to be sure that you fully emulsify it. You stir yeah. it really good so that you're sure you can absorb it well. Okay? All righty. Okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank Bye you. Now. Bye. All right. This is Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D. This is Healthline Live, and we're answering your nutrition and health-related questions. You reach us toll-free, 888 588 7576. Let's go right back to the phones. So let's go to Patricia in California. Are you there, Patricia? Yes, I am, Dr. How Marshall. old a woman are you? How much do you weigh? 75, 98 pounds. Yeah, well, you know, at your age, unless you're using digestive enzymes and unless you're working on bone metabolism, your body's very fragile. And I think that's what you're finding after somebody fell on top of you, and now you yeah. have some questions about memory and sciatic pain. Are you using yeah. uh, something like Quantum Digest and Betaine Hydrochloride? Yes, I've just begun using oh, it. Oh, just begun. Okay, that's why. All right, well, the other thing you're going to have to do is get pH paper and work on forcing that first morning urine pH back into the green zone, 6-4 to 7-0. And, and how do you do that? Well, you will do that by checking every three days the first morning urine and then adding something like pH trio as long as the kidneys are good. At your age, I would probably uh, use greens mix and I would use the D3 gold and... Since you're so sensitive, I would also add some bone and joint. And so the greens mix, we'd want a couple of tablespoons a day. It could be in a smoothie. The D3 gold, we're going to want six drops, plus about four drops of limonene in one ounce of water. And the bone and joint, we're probably going to want about three per meal. Now you've covered the two basic things that can make you strong and carry you to about age 100 in the shape of a 50, 60-year-old person. So wow. it, it can just change the game. Now, memory, uh, you may want to just jump on some DHA and maybe take three to five of those at your main meal. And the sciatic pain, which side is it, left or right? Right. Right side, okay, so it's probably the injury. You probably injured it. So there... Yes, it what you may want to do, I don't know where you are in California, but you may want to um, work on getting that area that's injured, mud pack, that's probably the right sacroiliac joint, right SI joint or sacrum. So you may need to have that mud packed, and so you'd need to see someone who knows uh, QRA. Where are you in northern, are you in northern California? We're in central California. So you're near Los Gatos? Yes. There's a couple docs there. So if you call the order line, they can give you somebody. Just make sure they're right up to date. They know how to do packs, and then you'll be sure you get somebody that's good. I would jump on these things as fast as you can. I'd also go on the biofield diet, but I would go on it in the relaxed version. That means where it says you can eat something occasionally, you may do that. Okay. Okay, now, uh, all these things that you told me, I, I couldn't write them down fast enough. No problem. Oh. You can call your order line, and in about 15 minutes, they'll have my notes, and they'll go over all that with you, okay? Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate Bye. your help. You're appreciate welcome. You. You'll, you'll appreciate it much more in about six, eight months when you feel great. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm looking Take forward care. to it. Take care. Thank you. All right. This is Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D. This is Healthline Live. And we're answering your nutrition and health-related questions. And, you know, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, then by all means, we want to invite you to visit with a QRA practitioner, someone who knows 21st century clinical nutrition, and they're going to be able to pinpoint what nutrients your body needs and how much, and they're going to be able to take it a step further. They're going to even be able to find things you didn't realize were messing up your body such as old scar traumas that may have occurred in childhood or adolescence and they're choking the life out of a key organ or gland. And it may even be part of your chief complaint, but wow, this uh, is such a revolutionary technology and it's so simple. And if you just want to get your feet wet, 
just do your bone metabolism or your digestion and see what a new lease on life you can have. So give a buzz to our order line and visit with someone who's mastered this wonderful technology. The order line number, 800-370-3447. 800-370-3447. All right, let's go right back to the phones here. And let's go to Rose in Detroit, Michigan. And she's got burning mouth, uh, some burning mouth sensation. Are you there, Rose? Yes, I am, Doctor. How are you? Good. And how old a woman are you? And how much do you weigh? 40, 130 pounds. Okay. Well, the first thing you want to know is that the most common reason this happens is low B vitamins. Yes. Okay. And you know that. Yes. Good. All right. And so are you taking a B vitamin? Um, yeah, I just got diagnosed recently, so oh. um, I'm just getting, I'm just starting this uh, whole new regimen. But um, the doctor that did the diagnosis also went through this whole A to Z test for a whole bunch of amino acids in the system, gut probi- um, uh, enzymes in the system, right. um, just a whole bunch of things. I'm just, I guess the vitamin Bs came back low, but a whole bunch of other things came back out of whack as well. So okay. I'm just wondering, in your experience, has there been any any other um, things besides the vitamin B that's more rare that you'd see but would be related to burning mouth? Absolutely. <laughs> but it, as you just said, rare. So mm-hmm. I certainly wouldn't recommend it as the first thing that you try. You want to try... It's like fixing a car. You know, I, I worked as a mechanic for a long time mm-hmm. uh, when I was going to school, and um, the one lesson that was hammered into my head all the time was you do the obvious thing first. You do okay. the simplest thing first. If that doesn't work, okay, now you move on, but you don't try the exotic first. So gotcha. I think the same thing goes for working on the human body, okay? Okay. So I would try this now. Many of the other things that may be out of whack may be the result of having the lack of B vitamins. And the question you need to ask yourself is why are you out of B vitamins? Are are you under extreme stress? Do you eat a lot of sugar? Are you getting alcohol? What are you doing so that the body doesn't have these B vitamins? Gotcha. And you're not Uh, that old a woman, so you should still be able to digest fairly decently. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it is a lot of relation to stress, and that's what he diagnosed as well. Okay. Um, but uh, there was a lot of things that he couldn't explain. Um, asked me if I ate a lot of fish, which I said no, and asked me if um, I've had my water tested, and I said no. So. Um, oh, the water at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess the other question is: I took this um, paperwork to the PCP, and she said that we should probably get a second opinion. We need to take it to somebody that can read these results a little more thoroughly, but I wasn't sure where to start with that, if there is... Um, well, you'd I, want a clinical nutritionist. That's what that's she's what talking she, about. That's what she thought, um, but she wasn't sure, and I said yeah. to her, well... Well, uh, you, you know, a B vitamin is very cheap, very safe. Right. You know, you, you, you want to do the... You, 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 my father used to have this saying, you can't take back a surgery. You don't want to do something exotic when it's just something simple you need. You know Correct. what I mean? So what yeah. I would do is just jump on a B vitamin, maybe max stress B, take a couple of teaspoons a day. After okay. a week, 10 days, see how you feel. If okay. you're feeling way better, then take a very hard look at the diet. Make sure you're not slipping in refined sugar or, or alcohol. And if you are in the worry wart mode, You've got to maybe start working on yourself mentally to realize and to reset yourself so that yeah. you're not uh, worried about things. You know, the, the, one of the tough lessons of life is not to be afraid. See, if the car's coming through the, 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 the house and killing you, it's coming through the house and killing you. So yep. it's not going to help you to be, oh, my God, uh, this may happen to me. Lots of things can happen to you. You can be in a plane crash. I mean, you know, you're here to enjoy the experience, to learn, to help one another. That's what we're here for. We're not here to be worried all the time about something that's going to happen. And I'm here to tell you for sure something bad is going to happen in the future. 
But I'm here also here to tell you, let's enjoy and let's support this body the best we can, okay? Wonderful advice. Thank you, Doctor. Take care. Bye now. All right, this is Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D. This is Healthline Live, and we're answering your nutrition and health-related questions. You reach us toll-free, 888-588-7576, and you can visit us online, qnlabs.com. All right, let's go right back to the phones. Let's go to Wiley in Aurora, Colorado, and he's got a lot of phlegm in his throat. Are you there, Wiley? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, do you chew tobacco? No, I don't. Good. Just checking. And how old a man are you, and how much do you weigh? I'm 69 and I weigh 195. Okay. Well, the main reason that the body makes phlegm is to get rid of a toxin. So if we don't have anything super bad in the mouth like tobacco, then it's trying to block the absorption of the food you eat because you can't digest it. So if you'll jump on some digestants, and you need about two of these quantum digests, that's pancreatic enzymes and pepsin. Dr. Marshall, uh, I'm already on this. Oh, good. Very good. And yeah. how much digest and HCL are you taking? I take two before. Two digest, and the, what about the HCL? I take uh, three or four. Excellent. Okay. So you're doing good. So now let's come back to the next issue. Uh, you may have a dead tooth or a gum infection or a sinus infection. So now, if you're in Aurora, Colorado, probably the simplest thing to do is visit with someone who's trained in QRA. That's not too far from Denver, or is it far from Denver? No, it's not. Okay, well... Um, also, Dr. Marshall, I, I had a sinus operation before, oh, years ago. Oh, that's it. Uh -huh. 20 years ago. Yeah, but 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 you know when I run, I'm, I'm wheezing. Uh huh. I'm, I'm wheezing. Okay, well and, that's different. If okay. you're wheezing when you're running, that has to do with the lung and the the intestines. Now that you've got on digestants, that's really great. But before you got on them, you may have transferred a lot of uh, bad bacteria from the intestine to the lung. So we're going to have to clean out the lung. The smartest thing, Wiley, would be to see a QRA person. I can guess at how much to use and what to take if you want. Okay. You want me to do that or you want to visit yeah. with somebody? Uh, I'm, you can tell me, but I'm, I might do, visit do, also. Do both, yeah. Okay, for the wheezing, you'd want to get on what's called lung support. And you'd need about, oh... Four per meal, and at the same time you would take garlicidin, and that would be four per meal, and you need to use this roughly about six eight weeks, and it should clean out the lung. So you should notice uh, over time that as you're running you don't wheeze. Okay, let's come back to the sinus problem though. That is also almost for sure waste products transferred from the gut into the sinus. And so there may still be a lot of residual stuff there. Now, most of the time we can get it out with a nutrient, but not all the time. If indeed you've had a upper impacted wisdom tooth and the tooth was very deep in the tissue, then you may have to visit with a dentist who has a laser an NDAG laser to laser that and destroy whatever is um, uh, remaining infectiously in the gum, okay? Because uh -huh. that gum will go to the sinus and keep the body producing this mucus. So you, you see the problem. That's why I, I think it's a good idea to keep in mind a guy like uh, Bro Dr. Brock Schwartz in uh, in Denver, downtown Denver, he can take care of this in his sleep. But if we've got to deal with this, then what I would say is you may have to use a little more in the way of garlicide, and instead of four per meal, you might go to like five per meal and see if this helps you to clean out and start feeling a lot better. Okay? 
Okay. Okay. Take care. I so made notes on everything, so if you call in, they can they can go over it with you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Venom. All right. This is Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D. This is Healthline Live. You guys that are on the line, just stay right there. I'll have to catch you off the air. Don't miss today's great special, our Lean Keto Blend. This is just what you need to prime the pump and start burning the fat you don't want. Even one pound, remember, is a time bomb waiting to give you serious problems over the years, so you don't want to leave even one pound extra body fat. So this is the way to help you and jump on the biofield diet with this lean keto blend. And if you feel you need even more help, let's say you need to drop 50 pounds, then by all means, jump on our adaptogen. Take three of those at breakfast as well so you get the best help, not just for your fat metabolism, but also for hormones throughout the body. So give that a shot. We're just about out of time, guys. You guys are on the line. Stay right there. We'll catch you off the air. And, uh, of course, uh, give a buzz to our order line for help. And if you have a question, they'll help you as well. God bless you all. Bye for now. To find out more about these specials or any of our other great products, call 1-800-370-3447. That's 1-800-370-3447. Dr. Marshall's comments have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Have a... The new word on the street is bloated. Yeah, you eat this food, GMO herbicide, pesticide, foods aren't safe anymore. And then we eat them and we're bloated. Our stomach says, no, no, no more, Seymour. So what we have... This is Joe Lyons. Riverside Municipal Airport would like to now honor every American who has made the ultimate sacrifice in our armed forces. On Memorial Day 2017, we salute Army Lieutenant Orville Block, who served his country above and beyond the call of duty. It was September 22, 1944. Orville Block was in Italy and his company had been halted by a group of enemy machine guns. He took three volunteers and crawled toward the buildings where he dashed into the face of enemy fire to throw a grenade. Then he moved into one of the houses and captured an entire machine gun crew. He repeated this brave and dangerous action two more times that afternoon and by the end of the day, he had single-handedly captured 19 prisoners and eliminated five enemy machine guns. Lieutenant Orville Block was awarded the Medal of Honor for service above and beyond. This Memorial Day, the Riverside Municipal Airport salutes America's veterans, honoring especially all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Riverside Airport, itself a Civil Air Patrol site, works with two universities offering aviation degree programs, Tower Control ILS, six flight schools, and an A&P school. Riverside Municipal also salutes the city's own National Cemetery. To all who have served above and beyond, to those who have slipped the surly bonds of Earth, a heartfelt thanks to you from Riverside Municipal Airport. KCAA Loma Linda, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. Shares of Ford Motors down more than 30% in just the last three years since Mark Fields became CEO. Well, today, shares of the automaker rose 2% after Fields was fired. He was quickly replaced with a turnaround expert who now runs Ford's self-driving autos unit. Elsewhere on Wall Street, stocks saw some healthy gains today, with higher oil prices lifting energy company shares and multi-billion dollar weapons deals with Saudi Arabia giving defense and technology firms a big boost. At the close, the Dow was up 90 points, the Nasdaq up 50. Liquidation sales began today at a handful of the 138 J.C. Penney stores that are being shut down for good at the end of July. Meantime, Sears announced it's closing 30 more stores on top of the 150 Sears and Kmart stores it previously said would close. And a recall of Nathan's Famous and Curtis Brand ready-to-eat beef hot dogs after metal pieces were found in some packages. CNBC. My number two does not look like a number two. I don't know what to call it. Is there a number three? Table for four, please. Anything close to the restroom. Oh, a middle seat with these stomach problems? That's my fear of flying. Sound like you? If it does, 
you could be one of the many people with a digestive condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. Even if you don't know what EPI is, you might know the symptoms. Frequent diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain. If you have even just one of these symptoms, you could still have EPI because not everybody experiences EPI the same way, which is why it's so important to open up to your doctor about all your symptoms. And the good news is, EPI is manageable, so don't keep a lid on it. Go to identifyepi.com, complete the symptom checker, and use it to have a conversation with your doctor. Don't keep a lid on it. Visit identifyepi.com, brought to you by AbV. NBC News Radio. I'm Tom Roberts. President Trump says the U.S. wants peace between Israel and the Palestinians. We can truly achieve a more peaceful future for this region and for people of all faiths and all beliefs. Appearing with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today in Jerusalem, Trump acknowledged that a peace agreement may be one of the toughest deals of all. He said the volatile Middle East has experienced too much violence and suffering for too long. Trump again condemned violent extremism throughout the region. Netanyahu applauded the reassertion of American leadership in the region. He's under subpoena, but reports say former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn will refuse to testify in an upcoming Senate hearing. Lisa Carter has more. Flynn is rejecting the Senate subpoena and will take the Fifth Amendment, invoking his constitutional right against self-incrimination. President Trump fired Flynn in February over misleading comments about conversations with the Russian ambassador. The White House sends the president's federal budget blueprint to Congress tomorrow. The outline is expected to call for deep cuts to Medicaid and food stamps. The proposal contains funding to start construction on a massive wall along the U.S.-Mexican border. One-third of potential jurors questioned today in Bill Cosby's sexual assault case say they formed opinions about his guilt or innocence. Meanwhile, the majority says it would be difficult to spend weeks sequestered across the state while the trial unfolds. Two North Carolina congressional redistricting maps are being rejected by the nation's highest court. The U.S. Supreme Court is upholding a lower court ruling that found race played too big a role in the redrawing of the North Carolina districts. Opponents claim that GOP lawmakers concentrated African-American voters in a few districts to lessen their influence elsewhere. Justices were unanimous in their ruling for one of the districts. Mark Woolsey, NBC News Radio. Digital currency Bitcoin is surging in value. The price of Bitcoin reached a record high today, nearing $2,200. You're listening to the latest from NBC News Radio. Are you particular about the vitamins and supplements you take? Have you found that the big chain stores simply don't have what you need? Then you should know about the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. You'll find rock-bottom prices on gourmet, top-quality vitamins and mineral supplements at the Vitamin Center. Get 30% off on all supplements and homeopathic products. All, not just selected merchandise. In addition, you'll find 30% off on all cosmetics, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste, makeup, hair coloring, and lip gloss. And all tea products are discounted 20%. Why go anywhere else? See for yourself at the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills or check out the savings and place your order online. VitaminCenterAgoraHills.com Start saving by getting what you need from the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. And tell a friend that the Vitamin Center ships nationwide. Call 818-707-0005. That's 818-707-0005. The Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. This is KCAA. Good afternoon. This is Bobby Cherry, and you are listening to the DRC Wealth Management Hour here on KCAA, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and 102.3 FM. Happy Monday to you all at 3 o'clock in our drive hour. <clears throat> Glad you can join us today. We have our guest calling in from Georgia, a gentleman named Craig Bowman. He is the He's the National uh, Real Estate Operating Managing Attorney for OS National LLC, and we'll have him on the show here shortly after the commercial break. But uh, right now, let's get into what most of us are listening here for and what it is I'm watching this week. The markets as of market close, Mar May 19, 2017. A rally late last week pulled equities higher, but not enough to overcome midweek tumble. Only the global Dow posted a slight gain by week's end, and each of the other indexes lost value, possibly shaken by the continuing controversy between Russia and the United States. Investors appeared to move from equities to bonds, 
with the yield on 10-year Treasuries falling 9 basis points from the previous week while dropping over 20 points year to date. The price of crude oil increased for the first time in several weeks, closing at $50.53 per barrel. The price of gold also jumped, closing at 1255 by late Friday afternoon. The national average retail regular gasoline price decreased to $2.36 per gallon on Monday. Corn futures closed higher for the day and for the fourth straight week as rain and cold weather may impede the last of this year's planting and possibly cause some fields to be replanted. Soybeans finished higher for the week, but lower for the week as well. I'm sorry, soybeans finished higher for the day, but lower for the week. Investors are watching action in Brasilla, Brazil's capital, where President Michael Trimmer is being investigated for bribery. The reel on Friday recovered about half of what it lost yesterday when the allegations were first reported. Wheat had big gains with hard red win winter wheat recovering nearly all it had lost earlier this week. Severe storms and flash floodings are expected in the plains to, uh, this week and in the Midwest tomorrow where winter wheat and dry conditions uh, are prevalent. The emotional reaction to Wednesday's market drop was, in our view, more severe than the decline itself. This reflects a combination of strong gains and low volatility that has defined the market recently. Stock market volatility surged in the, to the highest level of 2017 last week, just 13 days after reaching a 24-year low. We don't think 300-point down days for the Dow will become commonplace, but investors should not be surprised to see short-term pullbacks this year. We expect policy risks, including unfolding turmoil in Washington, global regime conflicts, political unrest, as recently seen in areas such as Brazil and Venezuela, progressing Brexit no negotiations, and central bank actions to hog more of the spotlight moving forward, with the market perhaps less willing to look past these disruptions as it has been for this year. We think additional volatility will take the form of temporary pullbacks within the broader, higher, within the broader trend higher, but last week's reaction signals to us that after a period in which we haven't seen a 5% decline in nearly 11 months and only two 10% corrections in the last six years, the market dips were likely to evoke more emotional reactions. A glance at the 24-hour news cycle might suggest otherwise, but good news for investors is that the broader direction ahead for the market does not solely rest on Washington's shoulders. Although the market has risen 12% since the election, improvements in the economy and corporate earnings since then have suggested that stocks have more positive influence beyond potential Trump reforms. For example, international equities have outperformed which is reflected of improving growth pr prospects, not simply President Trump's agenda. While near-term fluctuations in the market will be influenced by policy, one of the reasons last Wednesday's drop was followed by a rebound and reasons we think upcoming pullbacks will be temporary <clears throat> is the fundamental foundation remains supportive based on jobs, housing, housing and confidence. Healthy job growth, a 10-year low in unemployment, a pickup in wage growth, improving housing market indicators, and consumer confidence at a 16-year high suggests that housing spending gains, which support for more than two-thirds of GDP, should see support, helping open overall economic growth. Rebound in corporate profits and earning rebound is underway, which should provide a solid tailwind for market gains over time, which is particularly important given current elevated valuations for U.S. stocks. Encouragingly, Revenue growth for the S&P 500 is the most recent quarter with 7.8%, the strongest level of sales growth experience since 2011. It's still favorable in interest rate backdrop. While the Fed is likely to continue a gradual approach to rising rates, interest rates still remain quite low, including the 10-year benchmark rate currently at 2.23. The earnings yield on equity still compares favorably with prevailing rates based on historical levels, suggesting equities remain compelling on the relative basis. We advise rebalancing to the middle of the recommended equity to fixed income ranges, maintaining an appropriate allocation of, to bonds to help protect against anticipated market volatility. Last week's headlines. A pace for new home construction took a step back in April, according to Census Bureau. Housing starts, housing completions, and a number of building permits each lagged in volume compared to March. The annualized rate of housing starts in April was 2.6% below the March total. Privately owned housing completions were 8.6% below the revised March estimates, and the number of building permits issued in April for all of residential housing was 2.5% behind March's total. However, compared to a year ago, housing starts and completions and building permits issues are ahead of their respective totals for 2016. 
The eye on the week of the head. First quarter GDP report based on updated information is released this week. The initial report in April revealed lackluster economic growth for the start of 2017. The latest figures on durable goods orders, which are included in the GDP computation, are also available this week. Both of these reports are good indicators of where short relative strength in the market is and the economy for the first part of 2017. And there you have it, what I'm watching this week. We'll be right back after this commercial break with our guest, Mr. Craig Bowman, and we'll be discussing real estate and self-directed IRAs. KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station for the Inland Empire. This is Joe Lyons. Guardian Jet Center at Ontario International Airport would like to now honor the memory of those who have made the greatest sacrifice for our country. May 29th is Memorial Day, and we honor the memory of Army Lieutenant Bernard J. Ray, who served his country above and beyond the call of duty. The 8th Infantry was moving slowly through a dense forest in Germany on the night of November 17, 1944. They were stopped by a heavily mined barricade along the only road. Ray knew that his men would be lost if they could not get through the forest by morning. So he loaded his pockets with explosives and crawled through machine gun fire toward the barricade and set off a massive explosion that cleared the road but caused his own death. His men were able to get through because he gave his life to save theirs. Lieutenant Bernard J. Ray was awarded the Medal of Honor for service above and beyond. Today, Guardian Jet Center salutes the men and women whose sacrifice has made the American way of life possible. Guardian, the most advanced fixed-based operator at the Ontario International Airport, redefines the expectations of the general aviation business traveler, one client at a time. Single-engine or cabin-class aircraft give Guardian the opportunity to enhance the customer experience. The Guardian Jet Center is the gateway to Southern California. You and I, Auto Truck Parts and Wrecking is loaded with 15 acres of used, salvaged, and rebuilt parts for your car or truck. Sure, you could go to any wrecking yard, but you and I has what it takes. Expertise, high quality products, and the finest customer service you'll receive anywhere. You and I makes custom drive shafts, furnishes full warranties on all their parts, and keeps up on industry changes. Call 909-888-6841. You'll be impressed by the fast and friendly response from the you and I skilled staff. You can also go to the contact us page and request a part. You and I hours of operation are Monday through Friday 8 till 5 and Saturday 8 till 3. You and I Auto Truck Parts and Wrecking is located at 1435 West Rialto Avenue in San Bernardino. Check out the you and I webpage at the letter U, the letter I, autoparts.com or call 909-888-6841 909-888-6841 San Bernardino Loma Linda Rialto listens to KCAA radio welcome back to the DRC wealth management hour this afternoon we have our guest Mr. Craig Bowman Craig are you there I'm here, Bobby. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being there today, Craig. Uh, for our audience, uh, and Craig, you, you know, to be honest with you, you your, your job title is kind of a mouthful. So, <laughs> so you are the National Real Estate Operations Managing Attorney for OS National. That's correct, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's a little uh, it's a little complicated because of being in multi states. Some states require an attorney, others don't, but. Uh, uh, Georgia being one of those states, so that's where the attorney part comes in. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Craig, let's give our listeners a little bit of your background, if you could. Tell us a little bit about you, your, your bio, and a little bit about the firm you're working with. Yeah, certainly. So um, I am a graduate uh, of undergrad there at, at San Diego State and a graduate of University of San Diego Law School. Uh, I moved to Atlanta in 2000, and I'm approaching 20 years' experience as a real estate attorney. Like we said, I'm currently the National Residential Operations Managing Attorney for OS National. We're a national title company and settlement service provider uh, in California that's frequently called escrow. Uh, I'm not your landlord-tenant type of real estate attorney. 
Um, I, my specialty is the national platform. I'm not state specific. I work with a lot of investors from people uh, from, from with their first time property to billion dollar backed institutions closing thousands of homes monthly. And before joining OS National, I owned and operated my own national title company, uh, which I sold. So that's a little about me. I've, I've got a lot of experience in residential real estate, a little bit of experience in commercial real estate, but um, found kind of this niche we wanted to talk about here today. Yes, um, yes. Well, in all transparency, Craig and I have, uh, have known each other for, gosh, Longer than 20 years, let's put it that way. <laughs> good man, very good man. We've known each other since our college days. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to have, to have him on the radio today. Uh, specifically, as our topic matter, uh, not only are we, are we going to cover some real estate topics, but specifically we're looking to speak about self-directed IRAs. Now, a lot of our listeners are probably very, very, very familiar with uh, traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs and the simple complexities that they're in that lies in both of those types of products. When we speak of self-directed IRAs, they're not overly that much different than a traditional IRA or, or even a 401k in that matter. Um, the most unique part of it is, as in the title calls itself, self-directed. Um, there's a lot of IRA custodians out there that only... Um, they only allow certain products or certain what we call vehicles inside your IRA, generally stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and the like. Uh, a truly directed, self-directed IRA allows you, the investor, to hold a number of different investments in there. And these include real estate, uh, private placements, tax liens, and, and much, much more. So, Craig, if you could, just, just tell us more about uh, your application of self-directed IRAs and what some benefits that you would see um, that are available. Yeah, so, you know, everybody hears the way to get rich is real estate, um, and not everybody has the either financial means sitting around to buy investment properties because they require larger down payment than a um, occupied home does, or they're not aware that there's other ways to get involved in real estate um, with money that you want to really see grow. Mm -hmm. And that's where the self-directed IRAs come in. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I, like I said, I've been doing this almost 20 years. And it's probably only been maybe seven years ago that I heard about this in the real estate arena. Um, and immediately, it got my attention. Mm -hmm. Because it is an opportunity, like you said, to direct your own funds in your own IRA to make the kind of gains you see fit not what somebody else sees fit right now since iras are, were created way back in uh, i'm guessing the early 70s um you know there has been some slow changes uh every now and then to the actual comp composition of an ira um in regards to the self-directed ira um why in, as you mentioned, you've only you've only heard of about seven years, but why do you think that is that you know it it hasn't reached the level of popularity or at least significance that other IRA type products have? Well, I, in my own opinion, I think that it's uh, your traditional broker isn't going to advise you of this because they're not involved in it. True. So it's against their best interest. You know, they're trying to manage their your money and make their fee off of it, and if you direct your funds away from their account, they're not going to get their fees. Right. Um, However, it's case, very... I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was just saying, it, uh, for me, it's been very much word of mouth. Um, it's getting a little better with the Internet and some of the platforms that are out there for buying investment properties. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know why it's not more popular than it is. Well, I, I do think you kind of hit the nail on the head, and I think with the advent to here, in just a matter of days, if it's not defeated, um, the new fiduciary rules are coming out on board. And for, for those that understand, uh, how the fiduciary rule is comply to the brokerage world and even the insurance world is um, the, the catalyst is you, you have to do right by your customer. Um, this is, you know, we, they have to actually put this in legislation to say, hey, brokers, you have to do better for your customers and do right by them. This is what the fiduciary rule basically establishes. Um, there are many professionals like myself that are, are previously licensed and we are fiduciaries by law. But however, now that, that standard is being applied over the general 
industry. And what it means is that, as Craig just mentioned, that a lot of brokers won't tell you about some of these products because it's not in their financial best interest. Uh, generally, self-directed IRAs are not uh, handed out or, or are not a product mix that, a, that an investor advisor or even a, a broker would, uh, would approach you with because it, it's, it's self-directed. The client sets it up. The, the client self-funds it. There are no fees to be paid to the middleman. Am I correct there, Craig? Yeah, usually usually whoever holds your IA does have a little bit of fees, but uh, a little bit of research, you'll find out they're extremely, extremely low. Um, it's based on um, most of the companies I'm familiar with. It's based on a balance and an example. The first $100,000 only has a $500 annual fee at one of the companies that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. So if you compare that to a traditional account with a hundred grand in it, you're going to be spending a lot more than that on management fees. Okay. So say if you have a self-directed IRA, Craig, let's, let's kind of get in the woods a little bit here. Um, what, sure. What isn't and what is not allowed via, you know, via current IRS rules? Well, the key, if we're talking about real estate, is you can't think you're going to trick the IRS and, you know, buy your own retirement home, beach home, home for your kid while they're in college, or rental house for a buddy. You cannot be involved directly or financially in the property that you want to own in the IRA. Mm -hmm. It has to be um, a long-arm third-party transaction. Okay. Can There's we, no self-dealing. Okay. Can we can we put that in layman's terms? So, give us. Can you give us a scenario um, uh, where you would see that applicable, or perhaps has been case law that you've seen before? I'm sorry. I, you. you Broke up on me there a little I'm, bit. I apologize. That's okay. I, I understand. There's a there's a storm moving through the uh, the Georgia state right now, but uh, I was wondering if there's a if yeah. There's, if there's some examples for our listeners, perhaps in 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 real layman's terms, that you could provide to us about uh, some some specific scenarios about self dealing. So yeah, a good example is uh, I'm living in Atlanta. A lot of people, when they retire out of Atlanta, want to move to the Florida coast or one of the Carolinas. Um, I vacation down there and I'm, uh, you know, just curious doing a little real estate book looking or driving around and I see a house and I'm like, wow, this is great. Uh, if I want to purchase that house to rent it out until I'm going to retire in it, that kind of transaction would not be allowed in your self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you can't sell the property to yourself out of the IRA and you can't buy a property for your own benefit in the IRA and that includes you know family members or any sort of people that you have an extremely close relationship with so I can't um, buy a property in my self-directed IRA and lease it to my wife so that I'm you know at the end selling it then to me or something like that understood and again Craig just to our listeners can get uh, if if they have some questions for you off the air when we get off. Could you give us the uh, the information for your company and how they can get a hold of you again? Yeah, absolutely. So the company's name is OS National. Um, my the telephone number is seven seven zero four nine seven nine one zero zero. We're on the web at osnational.com. And my email address, if you have any specific questions, is C Bowman, C B O W M A N, at osnational.com. Um, I'm, I'm very familiar with this process, so if you ask about it and somebody says, I don't know or I'm not sure, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to help you walk through this process. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, Craig, you know, it's, as we walk through the process, and so we'll give our visuals or our listeners a little bit of a visual. In the, the steps of setting up a self-directed IRA, and they're, they're actually fairly not, fairly uncomplex, basically. So if I can understand correctly, your firm, OS National, are you or are you not a, a trust company or you work with other trust companies to facilitate these IRAs? We, yeah, we do not hold IRA money. We handle the closing transaction when you purchase the asset or when you sell the asset. Okay. Um, but as far as opening the account goes, it couldn't be simpler. Yes. And for client transactions like this, would you be, if they contacted you to facilitate this transaction, would you have uh, some, some uh, partners that you work with that you could recommend? Yeah, I, I do. There's 
all kinds of options. It really depends upon what you want to buy. Um, you know, like you said, there's other things. We won't get too far into it, but like tax uh, tax sale properties, that sort of things. Some things that may have more risk than traditional real estate. Okay. Um, and the the service provider you choose will will be impacted by your options. Fantastic. Now, um, since, you know, when we look at uh, qualified monies and unqualified monies, is there a substantial situation that you could uh, refer to in which may be more advantageous for a client to use their self-directed for, uh, either qualified or unqualified monies? Yeah. It's, uh, sorry, I'm struggling with putting the words together here. <laughs> I think idea, ideally, this you know, you know, what turned me on to this product was seeing that an average guy who's just putting a little bit of money aside can really make his account grow by getting involved in this because you don't have to fund the entire purchase with IRA funds. They these companies will also mortgage. A portion of the asset for you to get you started um, you know obviously where you decide what makes sense financially if you want to you know scale this using mortgages or just get your first one paid for and then scale with income mm -hmm. that's that's all individual choice okay so when when you when you're when you're talking about building and actually the, com the composition of these again I, I want to I, I would love for my clients to reach out to you and, to, uh, and get more information, but on a, on a 30 foot thousand or 30 thousand foot level, can we again can we uh, can we touch base on perhaps a small example? Yeah, so uh, it depends upon where you're located in the country as to what real estate costs. Okay. Uh, where you're at is a whole lot more expensive than a home in Indianapolis. You don't say really. So, so yeah, <laughs> amazing, right? Yes. Um, there are. <laughs> now, why did I leave, Bobby? Why did I leave? Uh, I, I, I asked there myself are, that the uh... entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so there's lots of platforms out there to find currently tenant occupied homes. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that I could assist with. You know, some of those I work very closely with, but. Uh, one of them has a whole page of homes under a hundred thousand, and okay. you'll see them even as inexpensive as thirty or forty thousand. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's actually smart to start small. Um, you know, you can find a property that currently is positive renting. You know, maybe eight or nine hundred bucks a month, and it's only going to cost you, let's say, sixty thousand dollars. You can't. You have to be hands off with the IRA. So you're going to have a management company involved, mm -hmm. and they'll get their fee. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, either if you used cash, the entire amount from the IRA, or a loan, there'll be differing fees there. Mm -hmm. But you know, all of a sudden, you where else? I'm not aware. Excuse my ignorance, but I don't think most sixty thousand dollar investments are you know get, getting me eight or nine hundred dollars a month. No, they're not. And I guess in a, in a really good way, a good scenario, I could I could verse this. I'm talked or I'm asked a number of times of of young people, people in college like ourselves, 20 plus years ago. Um, you know, they want to get into business, but they want to get in business for themselves. And real estate, uh, as you would, as you know, um, there aren't any billionaires that don't own property. But uh, for those of us that want to get into real estate, yeah, it, it looks kind of forbidding how to how to do it. But utilizing, and correct me as I go along here, Craig, please. Um, if you, you know, if you're looking at real estate and you're, you you feel yourself is completely priced out of the California market, I always say, you know, you don't have to live in California. You can always buy a property in Kansas or a property in Missouri or a property in New Hampshire. Correct? Absolutely, and mm -hmm. it, it's probably in many ways better if you don't buy an asset that's where you live because you're going to be tempted to try and get involved in the management of the home if you can drive over there. If there's a repair on the property, you're going to try and call your repair guy or your buddy down the street who knows how to fix a water heater. Those are the kind of things you cannot do when you're using an IRA to own the home. This boils down to you don't own the home. Your IRA owns the home, mm -hmm. so your IRA has to manage the home. Your IRA has to repair the home. 
Your IRA sees the income from the home. Your IRA buys the home. Your IRA sells the home. So there's a very, you know, people all the time I think are familiar if they switch jobs, if they want to transfer their IRA to a new brokerage, that they can't get that check. It's got to go right to the next brokerage account. Right. This is the same kind of thing. The money has to stay out of your hands to avoid the taxes associated with uh, IRA, IRA penalties. Right. And so walk me through a scenario. Say that I am a, say I have inherited $70,000. And I have uh, I have no income, but I have this now seventy thousand dollars worth of capital in my account, and I have no credit record. Here's a complicated one for you. Can I in fact? No. <laughs> can I in fact utilize my self-directed IRA once I've established it and funded it to actually buy absolutely, a property? absolutely, so, okay. absolutely. It, it, this is not about this is not this is not about your credit. This is not about your history. This is not about your debt ratio. This is not about any bank balance except for your IRA balance. And that's inclusive of if you decide to get a loan in the IRA. What they look at with the loan in the IRA is can you supply the down payment, which usually in the IRA they want about 30%, um, understandable, and will the rent or anticipated rent cover the expense of the mortgage plus about 20%. The last thing you have to remember is most accounts require you keep about a 10% property value cushion for repairs, for management fees, those type of things. So if it was easy math, if you found a $100,000 house, you're going to have to deposit $110,000 in the IRA, mm -hmm. or you're going to have to deposit $40,000 to use $30,000 for the down the $10,000 cushion, and then borrow the remaining balance on a mortgage. That seems like a pretty simple scenario there, I, I would understand. And I know in this day and age, and a lot of people, especially here in, in Southern California, when, when you look at the uh, property, uh, the escalation rates, when you're looking at a property that just 20 years ago was retailing for twenty or $200,000, and now it's retailing for $600,000, uh, that's an opportunity that it's, it's gone. It, it may or may not come back again, but when you look at burgeoning areas, and Georgia being one, is a the metropolis area there, as I understand, is, is growing leaps and bounds. Is that is that still correct? Yeah, we're uh, we're be turning very much into LA out here. You would be quite surprised. Anybody who visited ten or fifteen years ago and came back today, it is a massive, massive city now. Wow. Oh, so, in your experience, Craig, and I know, you know, with your previous firm, um, can, are there any areas in the country that you would, uh, that you're at liberty to, or, you know, would you kind of uh, help investors or potential investors actually take a real critical eye? You know, hey, you know, maybe you might want to look in this area. Yeah, it, there's lots. Um, you know, so, the other thing, Bobby, is I don't, I don't want to say California is out of out of the market either because you have very strong rent values there mm -hmm. and the thing people have to remember with these IRAs is you're double dipping you're getting the rent the entire time but you also get the proceeds from the sale so if I buy for six hundred thousand dollars out there in San Diego and I decide to hold for 20 years and I sell for you know 1.3 1.5 whatever it is mm -hmm. all that money is deposited back into the IRA and taxed however your IRA is taxed so that's really, really strong. Um, you know, that entire 20 years, it's been earning you income, and then you get this profit, uh, gain from the profit of the sale, too. Absolutely. But, yeah, back, back to your original question, there's certainly markets. I brought up Indianapolis before. That's a place where I see lower prices and, and uh, valuable rents. Uh, South Carolina, we see it, too. Vegas is another spot. Uh, because it's, uh, I don't know if it's a transient town, I don't know the details behind it, but it was hit hard by the recession, and values are coming back fast in Vegas. So I see, uh, we see pricing home values soaring in Las Vegas, too. Hmm. Well, it's, you know, I'm a big, big, big proponent of, of generational wealth. It's one thing that I, 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 I try to talk to my clients to, uh, considerable, it's been a lot of considerable time talking to my clients about generational wealth and making sure that what they have now is uh, you have the, the ability to pass it on to your, to your, your family. 
whether it be a trust or whether it be an IRA. Um, and one of the vehicles I have used in the past is what I would call a stretch IRA. Um, in regards to generational wealth, can the self-directed IRA be composed to do just that? Purchase the house and in the with the self-directed IRA and at, at your passing or at your spouse's passing can in fact that property and that IRA be in fact moved generationally? Yeah, so it's not about it being property. It's, it's just like any other asset of any other IRA. Whatever the asset is at the time of death, if that's a passable IRA type account, the same thing will apply just because you're holding real estate. It, it, it's not that you're holding real estate that's going to disqualify you from from doing building wealth for generations. Um, it's I, I'm still I, I can't believe more people don't do this. It's it's an incredible opportunity. It really is. Well, I know a lot of people don't do it because a lot of people aren't familiar with it. And as we mentioned before, yeah, um, they just never heard of it. Never heard of it, and, and or again, they think they can't afford it. They true. But, you know, it's an opportunity to, again, it's, it's a significant opportunity to substantiate your wealth uh, rather rapidly and rather co conveniently, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if you can imagine scaling this, you know, that's, that's the, uh, the business model outside of the IRA for a property investor is to buy one house, make some money on it, turn that money into two houses, four, eight, 16, you know. Mm -hmm. multiply your profits. You could do the same thing inside the IRA. Like I said, there are there are some fees that maybe uh, you wouldn't have if you're self-managing your business, like the management company or, you know, the re dealing with the repairs and whatever, they may be tailored a little different. But the flip side of that is this is nearly hands-off. This is, uh, it's mailbox money, but the mailbox is money is going back in your IRA mm -hmm. for you to for you to enjoy at the age when you need to enjoy it. Understood. Again, Craig, could you give us uh, more information on how to contact you directly at your firm? Absolutely. Uh, telephone number is 770-497-9100. The website is osnational.com. And my email is cbowman, C-B-O-W-M-A-N, at osnational.com. And I'm happy to help guide anybody if they're considering this or if they haven't ever thought about this to answer more questions. Fantastic. And again, listeners, if, uh, if, you're, if you're a little shy, you don't want to call Craig directly, please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach me always at 909-754-1570 or you can reach me here at the station at 1-888-909-1050 or at the website drcwealthmanagement.com. We're going to take a real quick commercial break and come back with a few more questions for Craig. So please stay with us. San Bernardino, Loma Linda, Rialto listens to KCAA Radio. Hi, my name is Violetta Jaribi Aviles with Farmers Insurance, and I am a member of the WCR East Valley Chapter. We are happy to invite you to our 8th Annual Tea for Hope this May 24th at 11 a.m. at the Redlands Country Club. We will be honoring Youth Hope Organization. They serve the homeless, runaway, and underserved youth ages 14 through 24 in the EI. Their mission is to be a support system for this youth so that they may grow to be healthy, successful adults that exit the street life. WCR is happy to be partnered with this organization. For further details, attendance, and donations, Please call Violet at 760-485-5035. Thank you. Stardate, May 22nd. A project that's beginning this month will compile dossiers on hundreds of supernovae. That should give astronomers a better picture of the types of stars that explode, how supernovae interact with their surroundings, and how they seed the cosmos with chemical elements. The Global Supernova Project is a collaboration of about 150 astronomers around the world. It'll use about 30 telescopes to monitor supernovae after other projects discover them. The backbone of the project is the Las Cumbres Observatory, a network of 18 telescopes, including one at McDonald Observatory, with mirrors up to 2 meters in diameter. Because they're spaced around the globe, they can follow a supernova around the clock. That's especially important in the first days after a supernova explodes. Those early moments reveal details about the original star, such as its composition and structure. 
But the chemical signatures from some of its expelled materials fade quickly, and the radioactive decay of nickel and other elements soon dominates the light from the supernova debris. This is a follow-up to an earlier project, which ended last month. During its three-year run, it studied more than 400 supernovae. Among other things, it discovered several new classes of supernova. The new project is expected to see about 600 supernovae, also over a three-year period. Those observations should help astronomers more fully understand these powerful cosmic blasts. And you can find much more about supernovae in Stardate magazine. Subscription information at stardate.org. For the McDonald Observatory, I'm Sandy Wood. KCAA Radio, Loma Linda, where no listener is ever left behind. Welcome back to the DRC Wealth Management Hour with our guest, Mr. Craig Bowman, the national attorney for OS National. Are you still there with us, Craig? I'm here, sir. Hanging out in that storm. Is it, uh, is it pretty bad out there? Uh, it's a there's a little break right now, but uh, storms here, I tell you, they mean it. Fantastic. Well, I guess I can give a little background. We have some extra time here. Uh, myself and my relationship with Craig, like I said, I've hinted that we, we've known each other for, for quite some time. And I, I have to say on the air, congratulations, Craig. I understand your oldest daughter is going to, uh, going to the University of Alabama. Is that correct? She is. She starts <laughs> there this, the end of this summer. Oh, I'm sure you're, a, you're an excited parent, aren't you? I am. It's, it's a, you know, it, going away to college is the best thing I ever did, so I'm excited for her to go down the same road. Fantastic, fantastic. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Craig Bowman and I, we've known each other for numbers and numbers of years. Great guy, fantastic attorney, and um, kind of turning our direction back to where we are today. We're talking about self-directed IRAs and their applications specifically in the real estate market. Um, going back to that with the, uh, the self-directed IRAs, I know we touched briefly on the custodians and that you had mentioned that uh, you, in fact, have uh, a couple of custodians that you, in fact, could uh, to recommend. Um, the key considerations that you would have, and I have a couple few, so perhaps we will we'll throw it together here, but when choosing a custodian for these self-directed IRAs, um, it's a little bit different, obviously, than a regular a traditional or a Roth IRA. But in your terms, Craig, what would be some of the major considerations that you would see necessary for uh, a specific custodian? Well, I, you know, when I, when I first learned of this, one of my first concerns, and, and I felt like, is this some fly-by-night thing? <laughs> you know, because like I said, I hadn't heard of it. So I would think you want to pick somebody who has been in business for some time, isn't a brand new company um, that you can do some research on. You also want to, of course, look at the fees that they are going to charge and compare it to other custodians. And then I think the final and possibly one of the most important things is accessibility. You know, are you able to reach the custodian um, at, at, in reasonable ways? Do they respond well to your messages? Of course, they're going to respond to you when they want your money. But once they've got your money, how are they treating you? Fantastic. When it comes to uh, titling of the assets, um, can, you, can you give us a 30,000-foot version on, on how that is accomplished? Yeah, so in most places, when you purchase a home, um, it says your name on title. So, for example, here in Georgia, it would say Craig Bowman, or it might say Craig Bowman and my wife and how we hold the property, maybe as joint tenants with survivorship. Mm -hmm. When you're using an IRA, you're now going to title the property in the name of the custodian for the benefit of Craig Bowman. So it would be the IRA of blank custodian for the benefit of Craig Bowman. And that's that layer, almost like you titled property and trust, there's that layer there that separates you from actually ownership of the property, yet you're still in control of how the property is handled. There is no time restrictions. You don't have to own a property for a year or anything like that. If you decide it was a bad investment and you want to get out, you can get out immediately. You can list it with a traditional real estate agent to sell it. There's no special way you have to sell these homes. There's no special way you have to buy the home. You can buy it through a traditional real estate agent too. So it's, it's very much 
like you would do a normal transaction, except for it's titled differently to keep the assets separate from your personal individual finances. These are IRA finances, IRA money. Fantastic. I think that was a real succinct way of, of terming it. So, Craig, kind of now that we got, you know, we've, we've kind of covered that topic uh, very extensively, I would like to tap into some of your vast real estate uh, knowledge if I could. Okay. Okay. Uh, since the election, we, we've seen prices either, you know, regionally they've either stabilized or they've kind of wavered a bit. Um, from your perspective, what do you what do you see on the horizon? What do you see in consequence for at least 2017 to the new Trump administration in regards to mortgage rates uh, and, and and perhaps even new construction? Mortgage rates always are the driver in my industry. Every time rates go up, business immediately slows. Um, if sometimes if it's a small what what we've all been waiting for is the get off the fence rate increase. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've enjoyed years and years and years of historically low rates. If you don't have a mortgage right now, get one. <laughs> 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 it is cheap, cheap money. But anyways, that's a separate topic. It, but we've been waiting to see the Fed take action in a way that would encourage the people kind of standing on the sidelines, not worried about it too much to get involved, to realize that the price of money is going to go up. Mm -hmm. So uh, when there is a rate increase somewhere between a quarter and a half a point, I think it's going to uh, evaporate the refinance market, but it will encourage um, many people to actually jump into their home, including millennials. We're seeing millennials finally entering the market for housing, which is a good sign. And surprisingly, they're starting to enter the, house for, uh, the market for housing in the suburbs. And the reason is they're starting to have kids. So uh, they want to go to the good schools and live in the nice neighborhoods. And finally not live above the barber shop and the bar. <laughs> those are fun days. Come on, man. Don't watch those. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm talking not, about. Not knocking them all. <laughs> life, life changes are real. Life changes they, are real. That they are. That they are. Um, speaking of, of, of millennial and, and millennial growth, you know, we've all seen, you know, certain areas of the country being completely revitalized. We've seen areas in uh, New Hampshire, New York even. Uh, some even areas... The, oh, Georgia, for one, I would say some areas that are being completely revitalized because of the new influx of new money into real estate. Um, from your perspective, seeing how Southern California generally prices uh, those of lower incomes out in, in specific areas, what's the reaction happening in, in, to, in areas that are traditionally low volatility markets that you're seeing? Yeah, exactly that. So it's if big money rolling in either through investors or through first time home buyers, um, I have one of my employees, she's buying her first house and she's looking uh, at a, in a price range about a hundred to $120,000. Mm -hmm. And she's finding out that as soon as she goes, looks, the house is under contract because it's extremely competitive, but there's still a good amount of inventory. So, First time affordable homes are out there mm -hmm. for young people. They are also out there for investors. It's it's a great time to still take advantage. Like I said, the money is cheap. The housing is available. People are finally back at a point where they're not underwater. So those who have lacked mobility over the last maybe say ten years are their homes are are a place now where they can afford to dispose of them um, or upgrade or, or move, move elsewhere. Hmm. So as we've spoken on, for the majority of our conversation today, because of the new opportunities that are there, and perhaps maybe not, not so much the millennials in utilizing uh, a self-directed IRA, but for those that are mid-career or certainly those that are nearing the, the apex of their career, where they may be looking back and saying, hey, um, I didn't perhaps take as much opportunity to invest in myself as I possibly could. The self-directed IRA coming out of, you know, liquidating my 401k, perhaps utilizing that, putting it directly into a self-directed IRA would be applicable, correct? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of people who, because of financial hard times or in the real estate market and the effect it had on the economy as a whole, are 
were not as aggressive with investing as they wanted to be or should have been or weren't even necessarily putting money away at all because of job loss, um, you know, things like that. So, you know, I was like I was saying earlier, the potential returns here are just fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, it's really good stuff. Of course, you know, there's no I don't know, that's more of your disclaimer than mine. There's no investment without risk, but I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, uh, I think it's pretty low risk. There's a lot of these properties. There's like a whole platform for trading invest, uh, um, sorry, tenant occupied properties. Um, there are big, big companies that do this and are constantly disposing of assets to buy others. So right. they come with a tenant already in it. Security deposit gets transferred, all that stuff. It's it's really not as complicated as it sounds to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, I know what I would, what I, what I caution to say, because I know there's a lot of people who do have substantial monies in their IRAs and they've been basically sitting on the sidelines these last number of years because perhaps they got financially hurt and hurt significantly that it did affect their credit rating. And I know with, with having a credit score uh, underneath what, what a traditional what lender would like to see, however, having the option of utilizing a self-directed IRA withstanding your credit score would in fact perhaps be a place to at least investigate, correct? Absolutely. Like I said, there, this, is, this is not driven by your past performance with your finances in any way other than having the money to put into the IRA. And, you know, you can even continue to fund it. You don't have to do a lump. Um, and, you know, like I said, the income from the property will continue to fund the account too. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of people just set it up and they put triggers. When I get to this next balance, I'm going to find the next property. And then same thing. Another trigger for the third house, the fourth house, the fifth, so on and so on. And I don't want people to think, Sort of residential is my kind of expertise, but they they'll allow you to do multifamily. They'll allow you to do some light commercial. There's there's other things you can get into with this money depending upon the custodian. Fantastic, you know, I, Craig. Again, I, I really thank you for being on today, and I, I hopefully our, our listeners are taking some notes because uh, the hint is the secret jigsaw puzzle is there's a there's a substantial way to help you grow your wealth um, completely outside of the norm that you may or may not have heard of. Um, it, it, it would fall certainly within the what I, realm what I would call the alternative investment realm, whereas it's not the stocks, it's not the bonds, it's not the mutual funds and CDs that you're always told to invest in and put your money in and, and hope for the best. Uh, with a self-directed IRA, you in fact are taking control of your exact future and how you want it to happen. Um, do you have anything else, please, Craig, to, if you could, to add again your, your contact information so our clients or our listeners can, in fact, contact you directly? Yeah, absolutely. If you're interested in learning anything more or you need some direction or guidance or you're already involved in this and you're running into trouble because people don't know what the heck you're talking about, I do. <laughs> and again, I'm with OS National. You can reach me at 770 497 9100. We're on the web at osnational.com. And my email address is cbowman, C B O W M A N, at osnational.com. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Craig Bowman. Uh, again, Craig, I thank you very, very much for your time. We'll be right back with a real quick commercial break at the Darcy Wealth Management Hour. Miss something today, yesterday, last week? Check out our podcasts at www.kcaaradio.com. We leave no listener behind. Like to spend a few days in another world? Then write this down. Golden Bear Cottages, Big Bear Lake. Now, listen, this is not some corporate-owned operation. It's family-owned and operated by some real nice people. Unique? Oh, you bet. Golden Bear Cottages features 28 one-of-a-kind cabins on a five-acre historic site. Great for families, couples, and groups. And cabins are available with one to seven bedrooms. Golden Bear Cottages is just a stone 
stone's throw from Big Bear Lake and super close to three great ski areas. Now, I could go on all day about Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear, but to see everything, just go to goldenbear.net. Again, goldenbear.net. Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Check them out, goldenbear.net. Your voice, your opinions, heard round the world at www.kcaaradio.com. The station that leaves no listener behind, KCAA. Well, and welcome back to the DRC Wealth Management Hour here on KCAA, AM 1050, 106.5 FM, and 102.3 FM. The station that leaves no listener behind. Hopefully you had a chance to enjoy our conversation with Mr. Craig Bowman and our discussion of self-directed IRAs, uh, specifically in regards to real estate. I know that uh, I've been asked a number of times of how to take use of this unique investment. Um, no, it in fact is not just a fly-by-night opportunity. It's part of the tax code. It can, in fact, be done. And for your own opportunity to, uh, to explore, to increase your holdings now and in- into your significant future going forward. Again, my name is Bobby Cherry with DRC Wealth Management. That's D-A-R-C-Y, wealthmanagement.com. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit us there on the website or call us directly at 909-754-1574. Oh, I'm sorry, 1570. I should know my own number by now, shouldn't I? (laughs) Again, thank you for joining us this afternoon on the DRC Wealth Management here on KCAA, 1050 AM. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful afternoon. We will see you then. The DRC Wealth Management Hour with host Bobby Cherry. Bobby Cherry is an investment advisor representative of and offers securities and investment advisory services through DRC Wealth Management Incorporated, member of FINRA and registered investment advisor. Insurance offered through Bobby Cherry, a multi-state licensed insurance agent. California insurance number 0H34723. Neither DRC Wealth Management nor its registered representatives or employees provide tax or legal advice. As with all matters of tax and legal nature, you should consult with your tax or legal counsel for advice. This show is for entertainment purposes only. No specific nor individual investment advice will be given. The conversations and opinions of this radio show are those of the guests and have not been reviewed by KCAA, DRC Wealth Management, Bobby Cherry, or any of their affiliates for completeness or accuracy. thirsty for books that will fill your soul with wisdom, joy, and inspiration? Then take a refreshing and nourishing drink at Alice's Quiet Mind Bookstore, located in the heart of the Agape International Spiritual Center in Culver City, which incidentally was recently featured on the Today Show. From aromatic soy candles to best-selling authors like Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith and a whole host of other visionaries, Alice's Quiet Mind Bookstore has everything to soothe your body, spirit, and soul. For more info and directions, visit agapelive.com today. KCAA Loma Linda, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. I'm Tom Busby, CNBC. In a very tough year for a lot of retailers, things got a little worse today. Everything must go. Liquidation sales began at a handful of the 138 JCPenney stores that are being shut down for good at the end of July. And Sears announced it's closing 30 more stores. That's on top of the 150 Sears and Kmart stores it previously announced will shut for good this year. The news was good, though, on Wall Street today. The Dow up 90 points, the Nasdaq up 50. That's largely due to shares of defense contractors and technology firms. They got a boost from the tens of millions of dollars in weapons and tech deals made this weekend during President Trump's trip to Saudi Arabia. Ford Motors firing its CEO Mark Fields after three years in the corner office. Shares 2% higher today. 
In Keurig, which sells more than 10 billion plastic K-cup coffee pods every year, but in three years says it'll change the makeup of those pods to a more eco-friendly, recyclable material. CNBC. My number two does not look like a number two. I don't know what to call it. Is there a number three? Table for four, please. Anything close to the restroom. Ugh, a middle seat with these stomach problems? That's my fear of flying. Sound like you? If it does, you could be one of the many people with a digestive condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. Even if you don't know what EPI is, you might know the symptoms. Frequent diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain. If you have even just one of these symptoms, you could still have EPI because not everybody experiences EPI the same way, which is why it's so important to open up to your doctor about all your symptoms. And the good news is EPI is manageable, so don't keep a lid on it. Go to identifyepi.com, complete the symptom checker, and use it to have a conversation with your doctor. Don't keep a lid on it. Visit identifyepi.com, brought to you by AbV. NBC News Radio. I'm Tom Roberts. President Trump insists he never named Israel as the source of some key intelligence while meeting with two Russian officials earlier this month. Trump made the statement alongside Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem today. Netanyahu didn't comment on that, but said he's happy the U.S. is taking a stronger role in foreign affairs. I want you to know how much we appreciate the change in American policy on Iran, your bold decision to act against the use of chemical weapons in Syria. Trump has been widely criticized for sharing classified intel with the two Russians. Former CIA Director John Brennan will testify about the Russian investigation tomorrow. Brennan will appear before the House Intelligence Committee. The panel is looking into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. A Mississippi lawmaker says he's sorry for saying Louisiana leaders should be lynched for removing Confederate monuments. State Representative Carl Oliver compared their actions to Nazis. The Republican lawmaker wrote he wished to extend an apology for any embarrassment he caused to his colleagues and fellow Mississippians. That's Lisa Carter. The Supreme Court is rejecting two of North Carolina's congressional redistricting maps. The ruling upheld a lower court order that race played too big a role in the drawing of the districts. A loud show of defiance this afternoon from backers of a controversial pick to lead the National Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York City. Oscar Lopez Rivero was just released after 36 years in a Puerto Rican prison, but groups like the NYPD Hispanic Society and longtime sponsor Goya are boycotting. Those decisions have been misguided. That City Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito. More than 200,000 pounds of Nathan's and Curtis brand beef hot dogs are being recalled because they may contain shards of metal. The affected franks were produced in January and shipped to stores across the country. Parent company John Morell says they have received no reports of illness or injury. You're listening to the latest from NBC News Radio. This is Joe Lyons. Riverside Municipal Airport would like to now honor every American who has made the ultimate sacrifice in our armed forces. On Memorial Day 2017, we salute Army Sergeant John R. Cruz, who served his country above and beyond the call of duty. A squad of infantry was advancing toward a German village in April 1945. An enemy machine gun and an automatic rifle opened fire on Cruz's platoon, and the men were pinned down, in deadly danger from the fire on the hillside. Cruz rushed the strong point alone and crawled up the hill in the direct line of fire. Cruz managed to wipe out the crew of the machine gun nest, and even though badly wounded, he charged the rifle position, and so unnerved the remaining enemy soldiers that seven surrendered to him on the spot, while his entire company moved forward into the village. John R. Cruz was awarded the Medal of Honor for service above and beyond. This Memorial Day, the Riverside Municipal Airport salutes America's veterans, honoring especially all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Riverside Airport, itself a Civil Air Patrol site, works with two universities offering aviation degree programs, Tower Control ILS, six flight schools, and an A&P school. Riverside Municipal also salutes the city's own National Cemetery. To all who have served above and beyond, to those who have slipped the surly bonds of Earth, a heartfelt thanks to you from Riverside Municipal Airport. My name's Doug Salamone, and I have a new show for you that will blow your mind. So what kind of show is it? It's a podcast, and it's called In the News. And you can find us at inthenewspodcast.com. 
We talk about what's new, what's crazy, what's out of this world, and we'll dissect those thoughts, ideas, and events right here on the show. And hear all the news you may have missed or really don't give a crap about, but want to hear anyways. So come on over and meet me at inthenewspodcast.com. That's inthenewspodcast.com. This is KCAA. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Well, what an we- interesting weekend. On Friday, Iran went to the polls and voted for uh, Hassan Rouhani, the president who cut the deal with uh, President Barack Obama, to denuclearize Iran and bring them into the into the world of nations. Now, you know, I, I get it that Iran, that Rouhani, while he has the title of president, 